Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. I'm your co-host, Rich Gear here with you. And today we have a hot subject, volcanoes. Doug, what do you want to title the show? Volcanoes. Volcanoes. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, right. That, that was really uh, pretty, pretty good. So anyway, um, Doug, volcanoes are interesting, obviously, for a lot of reasons. Volcanoes have fascinated me since I was a little kid. I think every little kid loves, in science class, remember they used to be able to make fake volcanoes with was a baking soda. I'm making so soda and the uh, you know fake lava. Fake you know, lava. Yeah. We used to love that. But there's something about volcanoes, even though it's very destructive and scary. It's one of those things you love to see about. When I went over, when Carol and I went on our, our 25th anniversary with my sister Margie and mm -hmm. um, and um, my sister Tish and their husbands, you know Rick, Rick uh, and and uh, and Bill. We went. We actually, Carol and I actually flew over the Hawaii volcano. Oh yeah. And there was lava, and we didn't really. We saw it kind of coming, but it was. It had not. Um, it had sort of settled down a little bit. But at night we were on the cruise ship, and you, you could, could see, see all the red the lava yeah. flowing over the cliff, which indicates. I mean, obviously Hawaii, vol Hawaii is a living, live volcano, um, right. and so it's kind of neat. Uh, and there's all kinds of obviously volcanoes all over the world of various states of dormancy or activity which is uh, I think fascinating when you think about uh, this is a little sidebar but I you know you hear about all the global warming stuff I said look Krakatoa blew off more particulate in one uh, one three, couple month period of time or whatever right. it was the year without a summer you know and right. so what I'm saying is everything we I just have a little bit of um, I think it's a little bit of uh, skepticism, it's actually a lot of skepticism, a lot of this stuff, uh, how arrogant human beings think they are that they're going to be able to discombobulate God's creation if he doesn't give you permission to do so. You right, know? there's a, a, quite a bit of uh, shock and awe when you see a volcano. I've, That's, I've, I've yeah. seen a, a number of them. I, I remember uh, we were on the, the Big Island and saw the yeah, Hawaii. Kilo, Kilauea crater. And, uh, yeah. And there's actually a chain of craters that goes down from there that uh, of the eruptions that uh, go towards the the sea, and yep. uh, we, we you know we took that chain of craters road for a little ways. We saw a few of them, but we didn't yeah. go down and actually go where the uh, hot stuff was actually pouring out. Yeah, you get see, you get you think about melting rock. Uh, and that comes up from the what the mantle underneath, which is underneath the Earth's crust. Right. And there, and was, this <coughs> article that Andrew Snelling uh, talks about is kind of interesting. Doug talks about hot spots and how they may have moved. And it, it, and it's really interesting when you look at the, especially in the Pacific, the chain of volcanoes right, and how yeah, they, yeah. The, 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 the with the Empire one or Emperor mm -hmm. ones, and then you go into the Hawaiian chain. And there's this bend here, which they're not quite sure how that how that worked that way. Some people, they, they postulate that maybe it kind of, the hot spot kind of moved, but as you get closer down to Hawaii, the bigger, the, the volcanoes seem to get bigger. Right, yeah. And they seem to get more um, more active, okay, until you get to Hawaii where it's it's still pretty active. So Doug, what does that say to us about, uh, I mean, what, what are the implications here to let's say uh, plate tectonics, which is a big word in geolo geological circles, and more importantly, maybe Noah's flood and what happened. I mean, the Hawaii, Hawaiian Islands. When when do we think they were probably formed as a creationist? Well, my my belief is that uh, they would have been uh, formed uh, shortly after the flood. When after that was the article's started. conclusion as well. Yeah. And what the secularists will will tell you is that uh, you can sort of see a progression from like the island of Kauai uh, being the oldest of the volcanoes to the uh, to the youngest which is the big island yeah Hawaii uh, and right? they they uh, think that they they can look at the uh, uh, potassium argon dates and to sort of verify that they were right and let's a different uh, yeah so that when we you know, before we get into this my let's let's discuss a little bit about that they use the potassium argon date a lot and they, they, they yeah, it's quite convenient for this purpose. Yeah, yeah it is because potassium argon being formed under the surface there. But you've got it all the, from the the emperor chains all the way, and there's a progression all the way down. And they go, what is it, from 87 to 47 million years ago or something right, like that. Yeah. Um, what's wrong with that scenario? Well, well, they've got the calibration wrong. We know that, but why, why, why do you say that's wrong? Because I, I agree with you, but 
you know. Well, who, uh, you know, they don't know the the rate of decay uh, if it has been remained constant. Uh, that's the first thing, and the second thing is that they don't know um, how if there was any contamination with argon, which uh, you know, is a byproduct of the of the reaction. And <laughs> argon is would be a natural. Uh, product of a, a volcanic re re eruption. Of, of right, so if you get continued eruption, how does that throw off the dates? And, and I understand that's something I had not found out or didn't know before. He said that when, that, uh, when it's submerged under underwater, mm -hmm. even of rocks of recent dating, it changes the calibration. Right. I didn't know that, so that was kind of interesting. Well, was, potassium you know, uh, is soluble in water. And so if you have less potassium and uh, more argon, uh, if you make the assumption that uh, nothing has changed and it's all, uh, all came from the potassium and turned into argon, right. well then uh, you're going to get a, a date that's much older than what it actually is because uh, you have potassium leaching away and introduction of more argon, to, which has been part of the original rock from the yeah. magma. Yeah. And so uh, that that is uh, the basis of the uh, faulty assumption uh, going into the radioisotope dating. In so when we're talking about these islands after the flood, Doug, we're talking about 4,500 years ago, or so, approximately. You know, when the when mm -hmm. these volcanoes would have been. You know, after the flood, 40. What is that? 4,200. When did I'm, approximately? Yeah, it's about 2,500 BC is the flood. 2,300 BC. So. You're talking after that, right? Yeah. And we're talking also fairly quickly they would have been formed. And this is a whole. This is really one of the big differences. There, there, there are tremendous. Uh, there are a lot of different models, Doug. And we were mm -hmm. talking about this a little bit before the show because in the creation of circles we have Andrew Snelling who wrote this article. You have Baum Gardner who talks about plate tectonics a lot. We have um, we have. Uh, uh, Michael Ord, who has uh, some different ideas on, on how some of these, and they don't always agree monolithically, but I think that we have models that are very, very, they, they have, there's a lot of really good explanatory power in them, and they make predictions, which seem to happen quite a bit. Catastrophic I, plate tectonics is really uh, the, the secular plate tectonics that's been speeded up. That's correct, yeah, and I think that's, that's a good, I'm glad you brought that up, because a lot of people don't, don't understand that creationists believe in plate tectonics. We just don't think it's moving as slow as it is today. We thought in the past it moved a lot faster. And there's and reasons for that as well. And then there's the <laughs> other mechanism that has been proposed is that uh, instead of uh, uh, plates moving, what you have is uh, ver vertical tectonics where, where the ocean floor raises up and the the mountains sink, which is sort of yeah. That the, I don't understand quite yet. I, I'm hearing about that, but I don't. Do you kind of well, get it? What's well, the, I get it is because the uh, volcanic uh, rock, in terms of, uh, is much uh, denser than the sedimentary rock. Well, yeah. And, okay. And so uh, that would cause the continents to shift uh, as more magma was uh, roiled up as part of the flood. Okay. And so uh, then you see. All the uh, all the sedimentary rock up on the top of the uh, continents, and down here is the uh, you know just the basalt, which is the volcanic stuff, right. and the ocean uh, basins, and so that uh, indicates that something eroded away from uh, up on the mountain, and that. Uh, uh, went over and formed all the layers of sedimentary rock on the, the, on the continent. Yeah, because we have very little sedimentary rock in the bottom of the ocean floor, right? I mm -hmm. mean, we don't have much at all, do we? I mean, and that, that always to me is a no, an anomaly, you know, based on long ages. It mm -hmm. doesn't seem like it would fit at all. What's interesting is that this uh, uh, potassium argon dating thing has sort of been confirmed with uh, uh, remember when we uh, went out to Sunset Crater and near Flagstaff? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, you know the dating shows that like 830,000 years ago that that took place. Right. Uh, by potassium argon methods, but the Hopi Indians have legends. <laughs> they got of legends it, of it. Yeah, they, they know, know when it happened. Yeah. So it was like 800 years ago. Yeah. And so now uh, they're caught. Uh, Admitting that uh, 
you know, their dating method is wrong in this particular instance. Yes, yeah, that, but that's the way these things work because they're so locked into a theory, Doug, that even if they are forced by empirical evidence and data to basically concede this, they won't concede the whole thing. They won't. You that's know? right. Well, uh, there's an ide ideological reason that's, for that. That's and what I'm we're saying. It's not about the science here. It, it's it's an ideology couched in, in in a science. By the way, we do the same thing. We have an ideology. We use science just like just like they do. But the problem is we're more honest about it. They uh, they will not admit that pretty much they uh, have a secularist, naturalistic worldview of everything. That if there is a yeah. God out there, he's basically a deistic God that has really nothing to do with the creation uh, in the past or in the, once, once it was created, he basically hands off type of an idea. So he, he might as well not even be a God who, who he's, he's an unrecognizable God from a biblical standpoint, mm -hmm. okay? So in the flood, don't even talk about worldwide floods and and uh, judgments of God and that and whatnot. Uh, you know, this is not a God who is involved in in the affairs of man, even if there is a God. To their point of, of of thinking that basically science is the God, okay, and that explains that is all the explanatory power. So that's we know why they do this, Doug. But um, it's interestingly, uh, I find this in chronology, Doug. When I'm doing, it's not that we're disputing a lot of the, a lot of the relative uh, ideas that, that that islands that were formed farther north in the emperor chain, I think is what they call it, is that what mm -hmm. it was? And then the Hawaiian chain are progressively older to younger. In other words, the potassium argon has some value as far as uh, relative ages, as far as when was what was formed first or last. It just doesn't have any explanatory value as to the actual dates. You That's know? right, yeah. And it's all dependent upon how you calibrate it. And Right, and what what you're but you're not sort of going to get the meaning of what the, the ratio of uh, elements actually. Uh, but you generally you. get what's what's you know the the ones formed northern. The creations would tend generally, at least at least based on this article, would agree. Snelling at least does that the islands that are dated are calibrated much older by the potassium argon met method, and the, but down to the Big Island mm -hmm. Hawaii are younger. But instead of eighty-seven to forty-seven, we're talking about. 20, 20, 2,300 years ago to maybe twenty, maybe twenty, two hundred and fifty years ago, maybe I don't. Know. In other words, very short period of time. The Hawaiian islands are really formed. are young geol geologically. They really if you are. Take a look at uh, the Napali coast, which is one of my favorite spots in the world. Yeah. The, the valleys are steep, V-shaped uh, valleys, and uh, and the mountains are. Uh, uh, the coastline is uh, just full of these uh, deep r rifts and the uh, clefts. And Which the, island is that on? Uh, Kauai. Kauai, Kauai. Look at the Grand Canyon of the Pacific. Is yes, that the one? Yeah. That's a beautiful place, yeah. There's a spot yeah. where you can uh, uh, stand and you can see the beginnings of the uh, Waimea Canyon, uh, right. the Grand Canyon of the Pacific, and then on the other side is the Napali Coast. And so you said, oh, that? oh, that's right. I forgot about that. You're right. I remember when Carol, when we went up there that time, <laughs> we were taking a bus ride up there to the top of this where this mm -hmm. thing was, and there was some gal just did nothing but complain because it was all rainy. This island gets 100 inches of rain a year or 200. I don't know how many. Uh, uh, 240 no, feet of rain a year. It's unbelievable. Wow, a lot more than 100. Just so much rain. And it was cloudy and rainy, and we're going, look. And there she's complaining and all this stuff. I go, what? And I already said, knock it off. The bus driver can't do anything about it. It's just, this is what's the year to get rain. You're not getting it. Let's go up there and enjoy what we can see. We got up there, Doug, and everything broke open. The sky. That's was, what it does. It was amazing. I'm going, wow. And everything was jewel like, Doug. It was, everything was oh, yeah, so yeah. much color. It was just, so, I, I could see why it'd be the most. Your most favorite place in the world, but anyway, Doug. So and why does this? Lots of rainbows and yeah, uh, it was it was gorgeous. But um, so why does this smack or, or speak to us about young, young cre creation or young? Well, you would have expected that uh, the erosion would have been uh, flattened things out a whole lot more than that's true. Yeah, than what uh, is in this case. And then on the Big Island, you you just have all that. Uh, lava that flows off from the shield volcano and uh, the, sh the shield volcano is different than the stratovolcano in that uh, it, it, it you get the uh, you don't get as violent of a of an eruption you just get a 
a continuous flow of the so lava. So which, which one on the islands has shield volcanoes? What has strata volcanoes? Hawaii has strata uh, volcanoes, right? Uh, Hawaii is all shield volcanoes. That's shield, okay. There are strata vol volcanoes, uh, uh, like, for example, uh, Mount St. Helens would be one, uh, and uh, okay. Mount Hood, uh, uh, Lassen. And so what's the difference between them, Doug? Well, the, the strata volcanoes are more uh, uh, going up uh, in the air, and uh, they're more the classic, on, on land. The classic idea of what we think of as a volcano. The Mount Fuji is a, okay. a strata volcano. So what is a shield volcano then? Well, it's more uh, something that originated, uh, you know, on the ocean floor, and okay. you get sort of the uh, cooling effect of the of the of the ocean. <laughs> The, the Hawaiian Islands actually are the largest mountains in the world. If you take in the whole bulk uh, underneath the, from the ocean floor on up. Yeah. And so it's, it's pretty uh, fascinating to uh, think about them. But uh, uh, how many uh, volcanoes have you seen, Rich? No, the, I've only seen a couple. I've seen uh, Lassen Volcanic yeah, area. I've been there. Been there. Uh, the, the Hawaii volcanoes. Uh, that's really about it. Crater you know? Lake, did you see Crater Lake? Oh, I did see Crater Lake, yes. So there's two volcanoes. Crater Lake is a big volcano, and then there's a cinder cone yeah. in the middle of it, kind of kind of formed after Crater Lake had blown up. Yeah, hot, Wizard blown. Island, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of neat. Yeah, so, I, I've walked on that. Uh, you, you took a boat out to that or something? I took a boat oh, out to that. Oh, I always there. wanted to do that. Uh. And then there's another uh, little spot on uh, crater lake uh, called uh, Phantom Ship. Right, uh, yep, I've, yeah. And that's this uh, dike that's uh, sticking up out of the water and it looks looks like a uh, a ship or something like that. You know, it does, it kind, of does, it kind of looks like a, a pinnacle. Yeah. Uh, and then there's another spot just south of there called the Pinnacles. Did you see that too? The, I don't think so, no. No, that, that's kind of neat. It's the fumaroles that uh, where it hardened the rock around it, but the, everything uh, afterwards it uh, eroded away. So we got these pointy. Oh uh, yeah, I've seen things like that. Maybe I have seen that. And that's but that's in that's in the uh, Crater in or, Lake. That's in a Crater Lake or area, Oregon. Okay. Yeah, and there's a yeah. whole uh, uh, a whole um, meadow that's all pumice uh, at yeah. Crater Lake. Yeah, well, and of course Mount Rainier. I've seen Mount Rainier. Yeah, and that, that that's that's a, was a volcano. I've been beat. going to. Uh, I've been wanting to see Mount St. Helens, but uh, uh, yeah, I've never got there. You've I... never been to Yellowstone. Yes. Now Yellowstone, uh, uh, according to the speculations in these articles uh, by Andrew Snelling, and by the way, this is on the Answers in Genesis website. Uh, the uh, Yellowstone, he believes, uh, to have uh, taken place somewhere right after the flood. And it would have practically rendered, you know, the entire landscape uninhabitable for centuries, you know, for many years. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, the actual caldera that is at Yellowstone is something that you can only recognize from space. You can oh, only make it out. Interesting. It yeah. And you know, I've seen. Uh, Do you have any satellite pictures we could show? Uh, I, I think so. Okay. But, so but any uh, anyway, the, I've seen the Cascade range. You know, the I've seen that. North the Cascades. That's uh, all. Uh, Mount Hood. Did you see Mount Hood? And seen Mount, Mount Hood. Jesser, Mount Jefferson. Uh, no. You know, the Three uh, well, Sisters. No, I don't think so. I don't Three think Sisters I is near Bend, Oregon, and then there's the yeah. a volcanic national monument there called Newberry National Monument. No, I've not seen that. No. And so that's, that, I remember driving through that, and it's sort of a, a, just a massive lava field. Now, I have been through the uh, Craters of the Moon. Oh, yeah. And that's, boy, that is a desolate, that was a lava flow at one time. When I, when I get, it, and I think that um, there's a couple, there's the big Lost River and the little Lost River that uh, disappears into that. Yeah. And it comes out uh, near Hagerman, which is the, uh, maybe 50 miles away. Wow. And so it's all going down these lava tubes. You know, it's like, Doug, it's just like, this is all pretty much post-flood. Uh, Doug, how do we know, or how do we differentiate its creations between 
volcanism that was going on during the flood or even slightly before the flood as opposed to volcanism that happened after the flood? Well, I would say that the volcanism during the flood is the, the basalt event, you know, where you're okay, getting the, a lot of the origin of, uh, uh, of the uh, mountains being lifted okay. up uh, at the time of the flood. So you had this, uh, the flood waters would have been uh, covered the entire earth. I, I'm favoring uh, Michael Lord's idea of, uh, of, the, of the vertical. Vertical, uh, vertical. Technology. And uh, there's also some movement as well uh, you know, of, the, of the plates. You know, we, we, I, you know, I think there's something to the vertical plate, te uh, yeah. te plate tectonics. Does uh, Baumgartner or Snelling or any of those, have they, do they, have they, these, these guys talking over some of these ideas? Uh, yeah, there's about five different uh, ideas uh, uh, floating around. And then one of the uh, guys on CRSnet, uh, his name is Barnhart, uh, he, oh, yeah. he th talks a lot about uh, 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 impact craters uh, being a, a cause of, of the flood and something that would have happened during the flood. And, and we have to, in our uh, paradigm, uh, figure out you know, what all these different things mean that, uh, that we see in, in the geology. And yep. you know, we, we can't go back in time and actually explore it again because uh, time has passed and uh, you know, there's always, always all these different scenarios of how, how it could have happened. Right. And so all we need to see is the aftermath, and uh, it's like going into a computer program and trying to reverse engineer it without having the source code. You know, I still think, Doug, years ago I read a book uh, by Walt Brown. Uh, what's the name of the book? Uh, uh, in the Beginning. In the Beginning. Yeah. And he's kind of been sort of isolated by a lot of the creators. But, there was, but one thing he said that I thought was really, really good about models, <laughs> about, like, about theories, is mm -hmm. like, and there's three, three tenets, he said. You've got to have basically parsimony. In other words, you're not making up a bunch of stuff ad hoc after the fact, try to, to shore up your theory. You have explanatory power, what, what, what theory explains the most, and how does its prediction, based on your theory, come to pass if, if there's predictions being made. And I think that's what really, Doug, when I look at these theories, it seems like a lot of them, uh, all of them are explaining maybe a, uh, one or two or three different, but they don't always explain everything. It seems to be uh, you're going to probably come up with an amalgam of some of sorts of some sort, and I can see plate tectonics going this way, movement this way, and this way. I mean, I can see right. that. I can see impact craters or meteorite type things actually setting off a chain of events. Uh, you know, I can see all that happening. Again, we can't. I'm not saying we have to fit everything into one hodgepodge of a theory, but I'm saying I can see that maybe several things would explain it. Not just one one aspect of it, you know. And it's okay that if we don't have all the explanations, we can sit back and wonder about a lot of the stuff. Right. And uh, and we don't necessarily have to figure everything out. And if we can't, then that's that's the way it goes. Well, you keep, yeah. you know, the the Bible talks about it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, and it's the glory mm -hmm. of kings to ferret it out. In other words, I think the Lord likes to have. Uh, basically, I think he enjoys us trying to figure out things. I think he right. likes us discovering. And I think part of the of discovery of our past, mm -hmm. based on information he's given us, is a valuable thing to do. I think the model thing, Doug, as we talked about before the show started, why are models valuable? And for me, it's the fact that we're not just trying to appeal to, quote, a God of the mm -hmm. gaps, any more than the... The, the science does the science of the gaps because they can't explain everything either. They have right. so many things that don't work either. The fact of the matter is we're trying to find things, but when you find models that explain a lot of things and they make predictions based on those models and they come to pass, it gives you some, some street cred. It gives you right, some yeah. real, uh, the, idea that, the idea is that if you believe in a young earth, you're not really saying, well, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. I don't think God wants us to be that way either. It's, it's, he wants us to remain faithful and have faith even if you don't have all the explanation or answers now. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't want us to stop looking for answers. I think that's the cool thing about creation science, Doug, yeah. is we're always looking for science. We're not monolithic, and we have found some tremendous models, theories that do explain, that do predict, then, and it's not a bunch of ad hoc explanation. I think evolution has one more ad hoc explanation after another. 
they, every prediction they seem to make goes wrong, you know, and so, mm-hmm. they, so then they keep something, showing something else up to make it work. Um, so I think that's the value, Doug. You said there's at least five different scenarios of what happened with the flood. I mean, we've right. changed our opinion, Doug. Like uh, there's the hydroplate theory, that's Walt Brown's. Yep. There's the catastrophic plate tectonics. Uh, there's, uh, uh, there's the vertical tectonics of uh, Michael Lord. There, then there's uh, impact craters. Uh, and, Barnett. And, and then there's collapse tectonics, which uh, this guy, Philip Budd, he sort of uh, proposed this all on his own. And, uh, I can't find a whole lot of people who agree with him. But, uh, oh, I have not heard of this one, yeah. <clears throat> but um, uh, it, it's all interesting to consider the, these these type of things. What, what he believed was that there were uh, uh, there was uh, a bunch of uh, holes in the in the cru- Earth's crust that collapsed. Oh, interesting. You know, it is interesting. You know, speaking of Walt Brown, I think it was him, but it might have been somebody else. But the idea that there were fountains in the deep breaking up was really the the precipitating event. That caused right. a worldwide flood, and one of the predictions that was made that you would you should find trapped water mm-hmm. far below the surface in places where water could not have leached right. or seeped down. And we found just that broken up like like battlements underneath, and underneath it got locked in water. So it doesn't prove that that's the theory that works, but I'm saying it shows shows. It, when you make a prediction, it's like when, when Humphreys makes his predictions based on magnetic man- right. fields. We and talked about if you look week. in the book of Job, it talks about, have you considered the springs of the sea? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, Job chapter 38, and uh, uh, God was revealing a number of things to he did. Job that uh, uh, he, Job, didn't know about. And, uh, and it sort of brought Job to a point of repentance because he's, he was getting a little bit... Uh, well, I get a little self. I mean, it's easier for us to criticize Job. I mean, the Lord, Lord, kind of criticized him, but the Lord was gentle as well. Because I'm telling you, if you go through what Job went through, losing all your kids, having boils, having all your friends abandon you, and the ones that are your friends are more like your enemies, you know, telling you how rotten you must be, and uh, because this happened to you, and all this other stuff. Um, I got to tell you, I think Job did pretty well. I think he did. You know, I think he, he, did he made well. out pretty good. And he in made the end. pretty good at the end. No, but I always tell people, I said, you know, things in this world, even though God gave him back his money and his lands, he got more children. But the first ten kids are still dead. And they didn't yeah. come back to life. And there's there's things that there are consequences, and ultimately things will be made right when the Lord returns. Nothing is is going to be perfect in this life but it will be made right in the age to come so well we'll see you next uh, time on revolution against evolution